we're faced with, it's not an exaggeration to say, an existential crisis, a very deep crisis. We're not at the crossroads, that old cliche. We're way down a militarist road. And there's a vital signpost, Article 29 of our Constitution, which is almost out of sight. The whole booklet says, war is not the answer, war does not work. And it says it very eloquently. It may sound naive, but I've written an open letter as a citizen to my fellow citizen who is head of the Defence Forces. And I've asked him, how has this happened? Now, I'm not complaining, but there has been not even an acknowledgement that it has been sent, let alone a response in a democracy. I think that's disappointing. For years, that's what I spell out in the open letter, we were told, there's nothing to look at here. Neutrality is safe. Then suddenly, bang, at an appalling coincidence, the moment of the war in Ukraine, we have a commission which says, get with the program. Forget neutrality. Militarism is the answer. And we now have a government that realized there's a gap. But the gap is to be solved by making us understand the military rather than the sovereign people finally being able to say, Article 29 is what it's about. Please draw your policies into line with that. The Irish government permitted just this past October 3.1 billion euros from the EU so-called peace fund to fund the war in the Ukraine, to increase the intensity of the conflict, to prolong the intensity of conflict, and to create more death, more destruction of communities, of families, of the environment, of the ecosystem. And so this idea of naming it a peace facility and putting the word peace into these schemes is just simply peace washing, as I see it, because it in fact contributes to war, not peace. We are reaching the moment when the government is going to wield its magic wand and declare neutrality has essentially disappeared. Sure, aren't we cooperating with NATO already? Aren't we involved in EU security and defence already? And what harm has that been? Between 2019 and 2020, our military exports doubled. Our dual-use exports are now worth more than our beef exports. Enterprise Ireland and Simon Coveney have decided that weapons production is a good way forward for the Irish economy. And that, unfortunately, is one of the driving forces which is destroying our neutrality. It's money. The European Union's European Defence Fund has 8 billion euro to fund weapons research and development, and Ireland wants to tap into this. And we've hosted two arms fairs in Dublin in the past year to facilitate that. Irish neutrality needs to be strengthened and utilised as a force for good on the world stage rather than undermined and even for practical purposes eliminated. Opinion polls even since the beginning of the war in Ukraine show that people in Ireland continue overwhelmingly to support Irish neutrality. A great honour for me to actually host the launching of the booklet tonight in the doll here in the AV room because it's very important, I think, for the people that have written the book and contributed to the book to actually come in here to the Parliament as well and have that view on and to give a counter argument to what what we hear constantly in the in the Parliament and from Fianna Fáil and Van Gael that there is no threat to our neutrality and everything sound there and they're not doing anything that they'll undermine it. Well, we can see very clearly from the contributions there tonight that they are working actively to undermine our neutrality at every stage they can. The book sets out very clearly what the threats are and, and what can be done to actually change that and I think from the meeting tonight as well it's very clear that there's an appetite out there to get out and actually talk to the people and, and let the people know what's actually happening in relation to neutrality and I think that's something that I'll take from tonight's meeting as well in terms of my own constituency in Donegal to actually get out and publicly pursue that as well and let people know because I think that's vitally important. It is difficult. Our hearts of course are with the people of Ukraine It's a horrific situation. We are in total solidarity, but we are saddened to see the way in which their suffering and the invasion of their country is being used to trump up the drumbeats of militarism in Ireland and around Europe. It seems incredible that the horror that we're witnessing in Ukraine seems to be having the effect on people of wanting more preparations for war and more war rather than calls for demilitarisation 
or disarmament. Ireland, in its neutrality, was a proud champion of demilitarization and disarmament. And now that those words are no longer mentioned, the drumbeats of war grow ever louder. One of the saddest events that I've witnessed and I've been at in recent years was the arms fair, really, which took place in the Aviva Stadium in October. Not enough was it the fact that it was an arms fair, but the fact that it was called building the ecosystem was really grotesque and really offensive. And I find it extraordinary that any government or any department could allow that to happen. And the fact that the Green Party are in government at this time and presides over such an event is dumbfounding. We need a counter-narrative. We need another perspective. And this small booklet is an attempt to offer that perspective, to champion the great values that Ireland have stood for in the past and to not allow them to be thrown away without a struggle at least. So we're here at the Aviva Stadium protesting at an event that's taking place here. It's a conference hosted by the Irish government, the purpose of which is to promote and develop a weapons industry in Ireland. It's called a networking event and it has invited small businesses and uh, representatives of third level institutions to come to develop research and development into the weapons industry. I'm here because uh, I'm incredibly disappointed to see the Irish government uh, supporting uh, what is an event for the defence industry and is an event which will be looking at materials that could be used in war and in the creation of great human suffering around the world. I live in Belfast and in, in Northern Ireland we've gone through a civil war or whatever you like and for anybody on this island to be exporting weapons which are used for, for killing people I think is disgraceful. We do have a war going on in uh, Ukraine at the moment but there are lots of other wars which the West has been involved in. Um, Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya and so on. Where were people then? I can think of no better person to quote than Ed Horgan who was quoting Orwell and he said in a recent article we've now reached the point where war is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength and that really touched a chord with me because we have come to that point where language doesn't mean anything anymore. And I'm obliged again to put on the record that the war in the Ukraine and the Russian invasion is absolutely unacceptable, illegal and horrific. And why I do that each time? Because we are constantly accused of siding with the Russians. Yes, I do, with the ordinary Russian people who are suffering and the few courageous, more than a few, who have dared to speak out and are now in prison. Do I side with the government of Russia? Absolutely not. But we have a duty to ask, how was that allowed to happen while still condemning Putin and Russia out of hand? How did this happen? The role of NATO must be examined, scrutinised for what it has done, and that hasn't happened. And I know from the Dáil that if we dare to talk about neutrality, we're demonised, isolated and laughed at. And I'm paid I'm paid and it's a privilege. I'm not complaining about that. But I'm using it as how it's used as a, 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 um, a weapon to silence us, to ensure that we don't stand up. And so when the president of the Ukraine was in the Dáil and made his speech, myself and my two colleagues were judged by the intensity and duration of our clapping as opposed to anything we might have to say. So I got repeated phone calls from respected journalists, in inverted commas, that asked me, how long did I clap for? And why did I stop? And I asked them to come back and talk to me when they were ready to ask me about my opinion on neutrality and why I might feel so strongly about it. But no journalist has called me in relation to that. So we use our few minutes that we get in the doll to stand up and nobody is going to change me. And we have a whole array of instruments, the peace facility, which is about anything but peace, the European Fund, the European Defence Agency, and the interlocking of private corporations and politics for profit and for the destruction of humanity. The narrative that we're getting in relation to war, it's singularly lacking in 
an overall perspective. And so we have a focus on Ukraine, which is right, absolutely right to give all the humanitarian assistance we can give, but not at the cost of ignoring the war in Yemen, in Syria, in Afghanistan, and all of the other countries, Africa, Somalia. And we're doing that deliberately, and it's completely unacceptable to continue to do that. So if we do nothing else, reject the narrative of warmongering in our name, because we have no choice, really, because we are at that point of no return. Well, we had a brilliant turnout today for the first big gathering of the newly established Irish Neutrality League, which involves all the various anti-war and peace groups, the Irish Anti-War Movement, Peace and Neutrality Alliance, groups like AFRI, with groups like the Cork Neutrality League, and many, many others, environmental groups, academics, and people committing themselves to fighting to defend Irish neutrality. And I think the main thing we were responding to is what we would see as a very sustained attack by the government, by the political establishment in this country, to try and undermine a very proud tradition of Irish neutrality, where they are trying to soften up public opinion, to bring Ireland into involvement with NATO, into the project of EU militarisation, and using what is a terrible crisis in Ukraine to justify that. And what we were saying today is, it is precisely because when you look at the horrors of war, whether it's in Ukraine or what happened when the US invaded Iraq, when you look at the, you know, the terrible suffering of the Palestinian people at the hands of Israel or the horrible war in Yemen waged by Saudi Arabia, that what we need is a principled opposition to all war, all imperialism, all warmongering. And that here in Ireland, we are in a unique position to promote that tradition and support and strengthen that tradition of neutrality because, of course, this state was born in a fight against the First World War, against British imperialism and colonialism. And the founders of this state, the leaders of 1916, were absolutely committed to Ireland being a neutral country. And that doesn't mean being passive or indifferent to suffering. It precisely means siding with the oppressed and opposing war and empire and militarization. And we want to go from today's meeting out to really reach out to the community, into colleges, into schools, because we know the majority of people still support neutrality, but we need to organise that into a movement that is going to fight to enshrine neutrality in the Irish constitution and push back at the attempts by the Irish government to shred our very proud tradition of neutrality and opposition to war. I mean, if you look at the sh shocking amount of money and technological and scientific know-how that is going into producing weapons to kill people, the obvious thing to say is all of that resource, that technical know-how should be used to make the world a better place to build the houses that we need to solve the housing crisis, to develop our healthcare system, to develop education. Because every euro that you spend on weapons of war is money that could be better spent in actually dealing with the conditions that often create war and conflict, rather than pouring billions into the pockets of big corporations in the military-industrial complex who make profit from war and killing people. This is one of the most important issues in Ireland today. It's absolutely vital that we hold on to our neutrality. You know, Ireland has been always a peacekeeping country. It's about, you know, making sure that we keep it that way. I have no doubt that the people of Ireland want neutrality and we have to be very, very careful that we don't let the powers that be make decisions for us going forward on this issue and I think we need to now mobilise people, educate people, let people know what's going on and hold on to our neutrality and hopefully we might get a referendum and if we do get a referendum I think it would win. Neutrality is hugely important to the Irish people. I think that as a nation we value our neutrality, we cherish our neutrality and it's up for us as a society to protect that neutrality. It has made us stronger in the past and I think that neutrality needs to be strengthened because it will make us stronger in the future. The weapons industry is a hugely powerful force. It's not a force for good. It's not something that represents or reflects the ordinary Irish people. I think that we have to ensure that the whole arms industry, the vast sums of money, the destruction, the chaos that arms cause has to be highlighted and I think we have that opportunity. Nobody that I meet day to day knows 
the people involved in the arms industry. They're very secretive organisation, they're very discreet organisation, but it's up for us to highlight that because I've absolutely no doubt that Irish people would be disgusted if we were, as a nation, to facilitate the war and the arms industry. I think it's just people, it does not appeal to people. We are a peaceful nation. We sprang from conflict and I don't think we want to go back that direction. I think we're at quite an advanced stage in terms of the government's plans to completely eradicate neutrality. The way the EU operates is by a fait accompli. In other words, they do what they want to do and then afterwards tell people about it. And I think the government basically are saying that they will have a debate about neutrality, but we don't have time for it. Simon Coveney, I think, had said, and Michal Martin, that they wanted to redefine neutrality. They already have redefined neutrality because when we were forced into a second referendum on the Lisbon Treaty and that was passed, that referendum paved the way to eradicate the last vestiges of what the government calls military neutrality. And military neutrality just means not being part of a military alliance. It doesn't mean neutrality. Neutrality is what Irish people support. It is active neutrality, it is positive neutrality, and it means it's broad and encompassing. It means basically not getting involved in wars, not getting involved in other people's wars. It means being independent and resisting big power pressure to push us into violence and into wars. And it means impartiality as well. Providing good offices and UN peacekeeping only. It doesn't involve the so-called peacemaking, which is just another word for, again, war and high intensity use of force. And the scary part of the whole Ukraine war situation is that if Ukraine is admitted to membership of the European Union and war is ongoing with Russia or another state on its borders, it means that the Irish people um, are involved in that war. It means that the Irish army are involved by all means in their power. And that is something that the government have managed to successfully keep from a public knowledge. And they've used academics in universities to do it. They're called Jaminet academics and they're paid by the EU directly. And they've used mass media to do it. And so the Irish Neutrality League meeting today is really the last bulwark against the massive campaign of misinformation and it's a way that people can get themselves informed, they can lobby their politicians, they can talk to other people about what's going on because that's the only way we'll actually get the truth of the eradication of neutrality that is really upon us. We rely on NGOs and we rely on public opinion and people adhering to their values, to Irish identity, anti-militarism, to anti-imperialism and our post-colonial legacy in order to try and secure peace in the world instead of just joining this bandwagon of essentially warmongering through the EU, NATO and the Western European Union military alliance. Irish neutrality is valuable not only for Ireland but for the entire world. And if Ireland stands up, it sends a message of strength. You stood up to the bully and every Irish citizen can walk with their heads held up high of what they did, that they stood up for peace, they stood up for neutrality, which has been a key component of Irish history for a long time. And I think it would set an example for the rest of the world. No, we don't want to be involved in these wars. On the other hand, if Irish neutrality goes down the river, so to speak, that sends a very bad example for the world. Most of the Irish people, a very strong majority, believe in neutrality, want to be neutral, do not want to be involved in warfare. They've had enough violence in their life. There was enough violence in the Irish history that they'd want to avoid it. So I would encourage every citizen to make this an issue that they care about because it's a key issue. But do something, at least think about it. It's your life, it's your children's life, it's your country. The whole world will look at this. And if Ireland takes a bold step, if Ireland can say no to war, no, we're not participating in it, no, sorry, but we don't want to be part of your wars and we will not be part of your wars. That's a bold step. You can hold your head up high. The Irish people could hold their head up high and the whole world will respect that. I have protested outside government buildings in the Dáil for nearly 20 years now. 
and it got to a stage where I was effectively part of the furniture outside government buildings. So I felt there was nothing for it but to try something a bit more impactful. And the more impactful thing was to go into Shannon. It was the year of the centenary of 1916. And I saw Shannon really as a colony of the American Empire today, so I thought it would be symbolic to go in and to link it up with the commemoration of 1916, they rose up against the British Empire. I think the most pressing thing is to try and get the American military out of Shannon still. To my mind, the idea is to make the use of Shannon so awkward for the Americans and for the Irish state. I was old enough to vote when we started joining the European Union back in the 1970s and I was consistently against joining the European Union. And the deeper we have got into the European Union, the less choice we have really. Real neutrality would be to have an independent foreign policy, to try and play a constructive role in dialogue all the time and to act as mediators to try and prevent war. I think the implications are that it's a slippery slope in terms of going in a direction of militarism, of the war machine as an answer, of buying into the fears, creating that enemy outside of us, which is something that's promulgated. It's been insidious, you know, it's slowly crept in. I would encourage and invite all people in Ireland to really reflect on the depth of neutrality, the meaning of neutrality, that it's very much a position of strength, it's a position of honor, and it's a position that could highlight for the world an approach that's not antagonistic, an approach to conflict that doesn't involve putting money into the pockets of the military and industrial complex, but rather it puts emphasis and insight into resolving conflict in a relational and a peace-filled way that brings health um, to all beings and to our planet that doesn't involve the horrors of war, which we're seeing now. It's a difficult role, but it's one that doesn't lead us into the polarizations of either with us or against us. It invites us to that third way of looking at how we can, as a people, as a planet, negotiate peace. <laughs>